The Cuban government confirmed that a new smear campaign against the country has been dismantled after the political and media operation promoted and financed by the U.S. on an alleged list of disappearances in Cuba. The WHO warned that 75% of the vaccines against COVID-19 have already been administered in only 10 countries. And at least 25 people have died after torrential rains caused landslides and flooded Shengsu City in central China. Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito in Ecuador. This is from the South. The Cuban government confirmed that a new smear campaign against the country has been dismantled after the political and media operation promoted and financed by the United States on alleged lists of disappeared people in Cuba. Authorities of the Ministry of Interior strongly stated that there are no people missing on the island in relation to the recent protests or in any other demonstration that has taken place. Colonel Victor Alvarez stated that there are no secret establishments for the processing of people who, for some reason, or for committing crimes, are taken to the justice system. Colonel Alvarez also said that in the recent cases, all the family members of those detained know where their relatives are being held, and it can be confirmed by the prosecutor's office. And Colonel Victor Alvarez Valle from the Ministry of the Interior's Department of Criminal Investigation confirmed that in Cuba there are no secret prisons nor detention facilities other than those controlled by the justice system. As I said before, there are no secret prisons in Cuba, no secret units. There is no place in Cuba where you can take a detainee outside the procedures and issues that are established by law. And this Wednesday, Cuba's, foreign, uh, Cuba's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bruno Rodriguez, denounced on Twitter a U.S. attempt to force OAS countries to issue a joint statement against Cuba. The foreign minister tweeted, I denounce that the U.S. State Department is exercising brutal pressures on the governments of a group of OAS states, forcing them to support the statement or issue a similar one. Bruno Rodriguez challenged the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken to recognize or refute the authenticity of texts drafted at the State Department. And at a press conference, the Cuban Foreign Ministry denounced the attempts by Washington to put pressure on other Latin American countries to declare against the Caribbean island. The United States Department has been putting pressure on several countries. Behind that public campaign of concern for the Cuban people, there is a dark plan, well calculated and scary, that the United States has been developing with some organizations like the OAS, seeking to fulfill its long-awaited objectives regarding Cuba. The United States government announced on Wednesday that it will impose new sanctions against Cuban officials using as a pretext the alleged repression during the recent acts of violence on the island. In a statement issued by the White House spokesman, Jen Psaki, it was announced that the Department of the Treasury will have under investigation those Cuban officials considered responsible for alleged violence and repression during the demonstrations described as peaceful by the U.S. Furthermore, the White House insisted on its interest in sending alleged humanitarian aid to the island through the private sector. Social movements that make up the National Strike Committee continue to mobilize to present before the Colombian Congress the list of demands raised to, to bills that include the demand for the social crisis that the country is experiencing. Through some, mem some members of Congress, the movement will present 10 legislative proposals with, 
with it affects uh, the file is very deep. Groups of the opposition senators have reiterated that the way out of the country's current crisis is through the implementation of these bills that President Ivan Duque has refused to negotiate. The movements also seek an immediate stop to the government's actions aimed at restricting and suppressing social protest. Haiti's National Police announced the arrest of three people for their alleged involvement in President Jovenel Moise's assassination. The general director of the police, Leon Charles, said that among those arrested are officers Boni Gregory and Clifton Hypolit, in addition to a citizen, Dominique Colvin, who allegedly attended meetings where Moise's murder was planned. Within the framework of the investigations, authorities have arrested a total of 26 people, including 18 Colombians accused of being part of the commando that committed the crime. We're taking our first break now. Join us again after this, but don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account at Tibrajo Telesur for more news. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The Director General of the WHO warned that 75% of the vaccines against COVID-19 have already been administered in only 10 countries and blamed the inequality on a lack of political commitments. He also pointed out that the required resources to end the COVID-19 pandemic already exist. He denounced the lack of real commitment on the part of the world's uh, governments to achieve it. Meanwhile, the Director General also recalled that each government must pledge to protect its population and strive to vaccinate at least 10% of each country's population by September 2021, 40% by the end of the year, and 70% by mid-2022. And Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed his frustration with the West's hesitation in approving the Russian coronavirus vaccines during a cabinet meeting on Wednesday. Of course, it is hard to understand many of our colleagues who are continuing to differentiate between their own pandemic and someone else's, in particular, slowing down the registration of our vaccines, which are unquestionably safe and effective. I hope we can cooperate in this work after all. And thousands of people demonstrated on Wednesday in Athens and other Greek cities against plans to make COVID-19 vaccinations mandatory for all health workers, with police using tear gas and water cannons to disperse protesters. On the eve of a parliamentary vote on a government decree, protesters held up a poster saying no to mandatory vaccinations and freedom, along with orthodox crosses and Greek flags. According to police authorities, over 3,000 people were demonstrated in Athens and more than 2,000 people demonstrated in the capital, the country's second largest city. And Russia announced on Wednesday uh, that a batch of Sputnik coronavirus vaccines was produced for the first time in Vietnam, which is battling a new wave of infections. The Russia's direct investment fund said in a statement that the test batch was produced in partnership with Vietnam's state-owned pharmaceutical company, Bavio Tech. The RDIF added that the first samples from the batch will be shipped to the Gamaleya Center in Moscow, the vaccine's developer for quality control. The fund's CEO, Kirill Dimitriev, said the RDIF and the Bavio Tech are actually cooperating in the technology transfer process to provide easier access to Sputnik for the population of Vietnam.
And in India, a government study suggested that up to two-thirds of the nation's population may have been infected with COVID-19. Here we have this number, that is the overall saver of prevalence is 67.6% in the entire uh, population, which is from six years and adults included. In conclusion, two-thirds of the general population that is above the age of six years had SARS-CoV-2 infection. More importantly, a third of the population did not have any antibodies. That is still approximately 40 crore population of this country is still vulnerable. The government of Mexico sent a pilot packaging test of the Sputnik V vaccines to the Gamalaya Institute and the Epidemiology and Microbiology located in Russia to be analyzed by qualified specialists. The shipment was authorized after the necessary procedures for its, for its transfer to be completed since the pilot tests of components 1 and 2 were kept at the National Institute of Virology. In a press release, the Pharmaceutical Institute highlighted the successful packaging of the components where 10 liters of the active substance were used. Ecuadorian health authorities have confirmed 40 cases of the COVID-19 Delta variant in the country. Most of the cases are located in a province bordering Peru. Minister of Health Dr. Jimena Garzón confirmed the number of cases and stressed that the Delta strain not only multiplies the number of cases rapidly, but also increases medical complications, so the mortality risk is much higher. The minister reiterated that the only way to avoid these complications or a worse outcome is to complete the vaccination schedule. Therefore, she urged citizens to participate in the vaccination campaigns as soon as possible. Moving on, Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro congratulated Vice President Delcy Rodríguez for her message of dialogue, understanding and work during the General Assembly of the Organization of Business Unions of Venezuela, Fede de Cámaras. Yesterday, she was invited. The government was invited. The Bolivarian government was invited to the National Assembly of Fede Cámaras. Many years ago, we didn't see each other faces with difference, and the vice president asked me, we have an invitation to the Fede Cameras General Assembly, a message of reconciliation, a message of productive work by Venezuela. And that was what the vice president made yesterday. Tremendous speech was launched our executive vice president before Fede Cameras. I congratulate her, and I ask for her a strong applause of recognition. Likewise, President Nicolás Maduro denounced the kidnapping of more than $2 billion in gold held in the Bank of England. The theft of assets abroad, the theft of our oil, the theft of gold there at the Bank of England in London. We are being robbed of the gold reserve of Venezuela, belonging to the Central Bank of Venezuela. They do not belong to the government they belong to an autonomous constitutional institute, which is the Central Bank of Venezuela. More than $2 billion in gold. The gold bars deposited in the Bank of England then say that they belong to a government that does not exist in Venezuela. They invent a government of Narnia, of fantasy to steal our companies, the money, the accounts, and to steal from Venezuela the gold. In addition, President Maduro highlighted the report of the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, which points out that Washington does not know the use of almost $600 billion that were delivered to the Venezuelan extremist opposition led by Juan Guaido. These days, USAID which is the organization of the United States government, one of the organizations that finance in the world what they call civil society. NGO that intervenes in countries has an organization called USAID, 
that handles billions of dollars pulled out an internal audit report saying that they had delivered to the extremist opposition in Venezuela $590 million in a year and that they did the audit and only 2% had been invested in humanitarian affairs and they didn't know what they had used and where the 98% money was. We're taking our last break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. At least 25 people have died after torrential rains caused landslides and flooded Shengsu City in central China. Shocking images showing passengers struggling against chest-high water inside a train carriage were seen. Chinese President Xi Jinping described the situation as extremely severe with flood control measures entering a critical stage. Around 200,000 residents were evacuated in the province. Meanwhile, soldiers led set rescue efforts in the city of over 10 million people, which saw the equivalent of a year's average rain dumped in just three days. Meanwhile, the Beijing rescue team got ready to aid a flood hit area in central China. The Beijing's Blue Sky rescue team prepared life raft and relief goods ahead of a mission to aid the flood strike in central China province of Hinan. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Cao Lijiang lashed out and the U.S. and Japan for their pledge to jointly safeguard the stability in the Taiwan Strait on Wednesday. The United States and Japan are clinging to the Cold War mentality, deliberately engaging in group confrontation and trying to create an anti-China encirclement. This is completely against the trend of the times and runs counter to the common expectations of the most countries in the region and the world to seek peace, development and promote cooperation. The United States and Japan should immediately stop interfering in China's internal affairs and undermine regional peace and stability. China will resolutely defend its sovereignty, security and development interests. In Arweiler, a town in western Germany devastated by the floods, residents are clearing out their homes and discovering the extent of the disaster. The west of the country was deluged over two days last week, with torrents of water sweeping away trees, cars and bridges, and also destroying swatches of housing. Germany has deployed 850 soldiers to assist with its disaster relief effort after severe flooding left at least 105 people dead in two western states. A state of emergency has been declared in Russia's Karelia region due to a large-scale forest fires. A state of high alert for forest fires was declared in the region on July 14th. And also, um, according to the latest data, 32 um, forest fires engulfing 7,000 hectares are active in Karelia, of which 15 fires have been contained on 1,000 hectares. As many as 6,000 people have been evacuated, military hospitals helping to tackle forest fires, dropping 26 meter tons of water in the most active fires. A state of emergency over wildfires is also in effect in another 10 Russian regions, including Chelyabinsky and Sakhar regions. And Russia on Wednesday successfully launched a long-delayed lab module for the International Space Station that is intended to provide more room for scientific experiments and space for the crew. 
a Proton M booster rocket carrying the Nauka module lifted off as scheduled from the Russian Space Launch Facility in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. After a series of maneuvers, the 20 meter ton module is set to dock at the International Space Station eight days later. The launch of Nauka, also called the multi purpose lab module, had been repeatedly delayed because of technical problems. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban said on Wednesday that a referendum would be held to domestic support for LGBTQ law after the European Commission launched legal action against Budapest over the measure. The legislation, which includes a ban on the promotion of homosexuality and gender reassignments to under-18s, was built by Budapest as a way to protect children, but opponents argue that it conflates uh, pedophilia with homosexuality and stigmatizes the LGBTQ community. Orban said the referendum would include five questions, including asking citizens if they agree that schools should be permitted to talk about sexuality to their children without their consent. The bureaucrats from Brussels make threats. They start infringement procedures. They abuse their power. I ask you to say no together to these questions, as we said no as well five years ago, when Brussels tried to force immigrants upon Hungary. On Wednesday, Argentina became the first country in Latin America to enable a third option X in the gender section of the national identity document, with the first people receiving their new IDs during a ceremony attended by President Alberto Fernández. There are other identities besides the identity of a man or woman that must be respected and that have always existed, just that in other times they were hidden. And now there is this new possibility, which is that someone does not want to identify as a man or woman and identifies in another way. It is a step that we are taking. It is a step that I hope. It is a step that we are taking that I hope will end the day when nobody will be asked of the national identity card whether they are a man or a woman or whatever. Chile's Senate approved on Wednesday a preliminary marriage equality bill, a historic step for the nation's LGBTQ community. With 22 votes in favor and 16 against, the Senate approved the idea to legislate a bill to legalize same-sex marriage, which will now uh, be reviewed in further detail in the upper chamber. After, if passed, the legislation would have to be passed through the lower house chamber of deputies, where it is expected to face intense opposition from conservative lawmakers allied with President Sebastián Piñera. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorenglish.net. And also be sure to follow us on our social media accounts. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. See you next time.